Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the Echo PB770 backpack blower. If you're looking to purchase a new one, we'll go ahead and discuss some common issues or failures that may occur, or if you're looking to purchase a used one, we'll go ahead and give you some tips as to what to look for before your purchase. In just a second I'll bring in here and we'll discuss this blower here on the bench. Okay, so here we have a Echo PB770H, and the H is the hip throttle design, as you see here. They also have a T model, which is a tube mounted throttle as well. Overall, this blower is an outstanding blower, very solid, very reliable. It's been around for a very long time, and they really have it dialed in. They haven't made a whole lot of changes to them over the years, and they're just a good, simple design, and the guys really liked them a lot. So at first glance, when you look at, you're thinking about purchasing one of these, just kind of look at general condition. As far as the engine cover, what kind of shape is it in? You can really tell a lot about a blower and how it's been abused just by looking at it from the outside. You know, looking at the, you can see scuff marks all over it and it's pretty normal. But if it's all completely beat up and the engine covers beat, or the uh, air filter cover is beat up pretty bad, or the engine cover is beat up pretty bad, you know that you know maybe it has suffered some abuse that's something to think about uh, this one here is in pretty decent shape it is an older unit but well cared for for the most part so one thing uh, the first glance to look at would be these exhaust baffles right here every once in a while you will get one that'll break off and fail and then what happens is, is the exhaust shoots straight down so without this little tray and this baffle the exhaust just points straight down and it'll melt this entire lower part of the engine cover so that is something to be aware of and look out for if you're looking to purchase one of these used um, the other big problem if that does occur with the tube mount throttle design that throttle cable comes out right here and it runs along the bottom side so if that exhaust is pointed straight down it'll melt the entire engine cover and it'll also melt the throttle cable and all of the wiring included so be aware of that make sure that this exhaust baffle is in place recoils on these things are very good they're very reliable every once in a while you'll run into some issues with these rope guides it's kind of normal for echo they have a serviceable uh, recoil design that you can replace this guide if necessary so every once in a while you'll get them, they'll pop out of the, the recoil housing itself. They'll just pop out, and then if the guys don't take care of it right away, it'll get loose and vibrate, and uh, you'll need to either replace the recoil or just the guide itself. Down here at the bottom with the gas tank, gas, tank them, gas tanks themselves are fine, but the straps that hold the gas tank down, this is very common for PB770s that they will break. Uh, it is a very rigid plastic. It's very hard, so it, it does break easily. If the guys slam into the side of the tank right here, it'll shift it and it'll crack that thing. So that is very common with these. Air filter covers are really good, pretty robust. They hold up very well. The nuts, the little finger nuts here, they'll get worn down over time, so they may be hard to grab onto or if you can't get a screwdriver in there just from rubbing on stuff they will wear down over time this one's got a little bit of wear to it but not too bad the chokes and the primers the chokes will loosen up a little bit over time they'll get worn a lot of it's just because of wear and vibration so that's something to look out for make sure that it stays up on its own and that it's nice and stiff just a simple walbro snap-in primer so they're very simple easy to replace just make sure it's dry, make sure it's not leaking. Gas caps we've had some issues with. I don't know if it's just the ethanol aspect of it, but these gas caps will uh, swell and then they will not seal properly on the tank. So you'll need to replace the gas caps from time to time. It could just be heat related also. I'm in the Phoenix area, so you know everything here in the summertime, it, the heat really uh, plays a toll on everything. Throttle design. For the hip throttle for the most part they're pretty good pretty solid you if these nut these bolts center bolts the pivot bolt does come loose on occasion so this throttle can end up flopping around really bad 
and if they don't tighten it it'll just hang down like that and you know it can it can suffer a lot of abuse in the trailer so every once in a while these housings right here this kind of a flex housing it will crack and break off completely and you'll need to replace that something to look for the triggers up here every once in a while these will snap off or inside of here this piece inside will break causing some issues with the throttle as well uh, so it's but overall the housing it's okay it's an okay design cool. straps are really good on these units i like them they hold up very well um, again a lot of it's just abuse you know if they get beat to death you know and they get torn up and whatnot but for the most part they're good they're solid they're comfortable and on this side of the blower the tubes on these blowers are good really no issues with them this one's missing the handle and the handles are good over time the plastic is really hard on the handles and they will wear out eventually you might need to replace it the flex tubes are fine they're adequate the, the you know the rubber the plastic is it's a little bit thin and they again like any of these backpack blowers they will wear on the sides of the tubes and wear holes through them elbows are really good on the echoes uh really solid you rarely have to replace the elbows on these things at all and the housing and the volute and everything these are really good i don't have any issues at all with these i can't say as though i've really remember having to replace many of them at all you know it's there's plenty of room for the leaf guard there's no wear issues around them at all whatsoever so as a whole in the frames as well i didn't talk about the frame but the frames on these blowers are really stout they hold up very well you might get one every once in a while that cracks or breaks where the straps go through right there on the frame similar to still occasionally once in a while you might find one that uh, breaks off and you might have to make a new hole or replace the frame but overall outside of them really not a lot to go wrong those are just some of the things to look for on the outside so now what i'll do is i'll go ahead and i'll pull all the covers off of the engine and we'll just talk about some engine issues and other related things. Okay, I got the covers off of this unit here. I'll go ahead and start with the air filter assembly. One common problem that we find with the air filter assembly is just how the filters are installed incorrectly. So what you have is you have the main filter, and then you have this center baffle, and then you have the pre-filter that goes in side the cover first. So what a lot of people will do is they will put the baffle in, then they will put the pre-filter on inside of that, try to shove it in there, and then they'll go ahead and put the air filter in. You know, it it works. It just doesn't quite keep that pre-filter uh, to where it works properly. So you wanna make sure that the filters are installed correctly. So go ahead and make sure the pre-filter the foam filter goes in first then the baffle and then the air filter that way you get a good seal all the way around another thing is too is I'll I'll see them frequently they'll come in and this will be missing completely and this is a necessary part of the filtration system uh, it is nice and thick right here and it is part of the assembly to make sure that everything is sealing properly that make sure the air filter is sealed properly to this and then also to the housing itself so without that you have a bigger gap and you're not able to clamp down on the cover properly to squish the foam to seal it all the way around so you want to make sure that these things are in there always so that's the air filter design no real issues with these things they hold up very well uh, the choke housing like I said earlier, occasionally these will loosen up over time just because of dirt, wear, and use. So you want to make sure that it's, you know, this one's nice and stiff. You want to make sure that it's working properly. Um, the primers, again, super simple to change. Just a simple snap-in Walbro design. Mufflers, one issue we have with the mufflers besides this. This is a closer look at that baffle I was talking about earlier. What happens is, is this thing will break off down at the bottom and it'll just completely fall off and then the exhaust is coming out of here shooting straight down and that's what I was mentioning earlier. 
The other issues with the mufflers would be the catalytic converter that's inside the muffler. What happens is, is it'll come apart, it'll fall off, and it'll fall down to the bottom of the muffler. So that's something to be aware of. You can actually, if you shake it, you can actually hear it in there in there clanking around. It's a common thing with these. I see it quite a bit. If it is under warranty period, they will warranty that issue as well. And again, when you know you talk about warranty stuff, Echo is similar to all the other you know uh, Red Max and still they're good about warranting items that may pop up on these units as well. Carburetor wise, the carburetors are solid. They're really good and reliable. Really not a lot of issues. This little cover here, a lot of times when you pull the engine cover off of these things, these little covers that go over the top of the carburetor, you'll just find them kind of laying in there. They always seem to fall out all the time. So that's something to look for as well. Doesn't really affect anything. Throttle cables on these is another issue. We do replace a lot of them, whether it's due to the kill switches not working or the cables breaking. The cables will break off right at the carburetor or they will break off at the uh, trigger itself. This thing just moves forward and backward so it's not like a traditional pull trigger. So they'll break off in here all the time. And then the kill switch that's inside of here is notorious for getting dirty and not working or failing. So we do replace quite a few throttle cables on these. It is an issue with them. But again, it's one of those, you know, the guys are constantly on and off the throttles and, you know, they're hard on them and they do wear quickly. Another issue with these is coils. This one in particular is missing, unfortunately. Um, but what I'll do is I'll I just have one off of another blower. The coil sits, the coil sits right in here like this. And then the wire comes up through here to the spark plug. One issue, we'll either see coil failures altogether. They do fail quite a bit on these things. We've had to replace many of them. And then the other problem is on the coil is on the top of the coil is this post here that you hook your wire to that goes to the kill switch. So on the coil itself, with the PB770 is the only blower I've ever seen it on. These posts will quit working completely. Something internally will fail in the coil, so this will no longer work and you'll need to replace the coil. Another issue is on some of the older ones are these terminals. Just from vibration, it'll look like it's connected and still plugged into the coil. But this terminal, if you just give it a little tug, it'll just pop right off or it'll break clean in two. Uh, this is a newer design. They did change the gauge of the wire. This is a heavier wire now. So that problem does seem to be resolved. But if you do find one that's older, you may encounter that problem if your kill switch is not working. Another issue would be fuel lines on these particular blowers as well. It's a two piece design. So the piece that's on the outside of the tank is more of like that Tigon yellow style fuel line. And what happens is, is where there's a plastic fitting in the tank that goes through the rubber grommet, that fuel line will start to separate and come apart. And you can have, it'll create a leak basically, and the fuel line will need to, will leak and need to be replaced. So something, you know, if you're seeing a lot of fuel leakage around the grommet right here, something to look at is that fuel line itself. I'm going to pull this fuel line out real quick and see if I can uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the fuel line assembly for this blower. And then this is your main fuel line that goes to the carburetor. And this is your fuel line return from the primer. And then this is your tank vent. And then it also has this sleeve that goes over the fuel lines as well. But with the fuel line, where it goes through, You've got one style fuel line on the outside and then you have a plastic fitting in the grommet and then you have a whole nother style fuel line on the inside. What we've seen with these fuel lines here is they will start to split. This fuel line will split right here. It'll start to come apart and then it'll start leaking right here. So if it's not running right or if it's surging, any of that type of thing, you want to check these fuel lines. 
we basically replace this entire fuel line with a solid fuel line so we don't we eliminate that problem altogether we don't have to worry about it in the future echo fuel lines with these lines they're really they get soft over time and in this case is a perfect example it's missing the little ring that goes over it that holds that fuel line holds that fuel filter on you want to make sure that that ring is on there otherwise this fuel line will swell and the fuel filter will fall off of it so that's something to check as well another issue i've seen every once in a while is this little plastic sleeve that they have on here this thing will get as hard as a rock and it'll eventually cut a fuel line and it'll create a leak as well so if this thing is super stiff and hard as a rock you can just either eliminate it or replace it now as far as engine issues with these blowers we really do not see a lot of major problems with these things base gaskets for instance i almost never have to replace them i never see them leaking the cylinder heads are clamped down nice and tight i never have any issues with that the bottom ends on these blowers are very good. They're very strong. I tend to never have any issues with them. The only issue that I've encountered with these blowers on occasion would be wrist pin. Uh, I've had a couple wrist pin failures to where the piston, you'll hear it clacking around in there a little bit. And if it's under warranty, Echo will cover it, but it's something to be aware of. And I've also had them run for a long time with uh, pit, wrist pin noise as well on older units. So it's something that is somewhat common on these. The other issue would be carbon buildup. You will get carbon buildup on top of the piston and on top of the cylinder head. So the piston will be compressing that carbon on the head and then you'll start to get piston noise from that as well. I've had to pull them apart, clean the carbon off the piston, clean the carbon off the head, and that takes care of the noise. So that's something to be aware of as well with these. Otherwise, engine-wise, these things are very solid, very reliable. I really haven't had to do any type of major um, repairs on these things. They'll either just be completely dead from abuse and wear, you know, or you'll have, you might encounter some type of warranty issue, but otherwise they're great, very reliable. This little wire up here, this is your anti-static wire. So this screw will come loose and this engine cover right here, this little plastic cover will come loose and flop around and vibrate. So you wanna check that, just make sure that's tight as well. This wire basically runs all the way down the side of the blower. It goes in and then it goes into the housing and then there's a metal wire that's in the tube and that's your anti-static tube to keep you from getting shocked, if you will. So a lot of guys will hear a noise inside the tube and be like, what is that noise? And we just try to explain to them it's what, what's going on there. So something to look for. Otherwise, as a whole, you know, these blowers, they really don't have a lot of problems. They have a couple little things like the throttle cable would be a big one, the fuel lines, occasional wrist pin on a piston, and that's it. There's really not, we don't encounter too many major issues with these. So um, I'd be curious to know kind of what you guys see out there and what you guys find if you uh, experience similar problems with these as we do and anything else that you uh, could point out to help people out. So, but yeah, overall, I really recommend these blowers. They're just a good, simple design and reliable. So if you have any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. And thank you for watching.